and look, because there are always seats. There's a seat right there. There's a seat here if you're short. Um, there's a seat over here. Just gra grab, there are seats around, so. And if not, just you can sit right down here on the carpet if you want. But there's two seats right there. All right, uh, so look, a couple things before as we start. Um, we still need a few international students who identify as Muslim or who are Muslim, I don't know. Either one, we really do. See me after class, okay? It will take anybody, I, as long as you're Muslim. Even if you're a Muslim by accident, like me, <laughs> we'll take you, all right? Um, also, so I have, I have a number of announcements. First off, attendance sheets. So they're, they're starting today, and there's, there's, there are six of them, okay? And there's one for each section. So that means the attendance sheets will never cross over the stairs. Here, got it? Because it's, and same on this side. They never cross over the stairs down here. They just go back. If you're on the end and it comes to you, either it goes to the person next to you or it goes to the person behind you. It's really simple. And if you get, when it gets to the corner, like here or up there, bro, just hold on to it. Someone will come along and get it or bring it down after class, okay? And here's the deal with the attendance sheets. Your, your names, it's in alphabetical order. If your name is not on the attendance sheet, then you need to uh, see Lauren after class and get on it. It's by last name, okay? And go fast. Like just get it and sign it and pass it on, okay? Because it has to get through the sections. It usually takes us about two weeks for y'all to like kind of get the hang of it, sign your name and move on. And don't sign with an X, don't sign with a check mark, don't sign with whatever, like sign your name like you're gonna sign it every week, okay, cool? Doesn't have to be super legible, but it has to be the signature that you're gonna use every week, okay, or every day. Okay, so that's where it is. Move along quickly on the attendance sheet. Okay, so uh, same thing, remember, coming late, leaving early, you have to see Lauren or team in the back, the rest of the team. And you need to read the syllabus. So the first thing that's due is the syllabus quiz. That's due this Sunday at midnight. And you get, just by doing the quiz, you'll get the points for it. We just want to make sure you understand the syllabus. And secondly, it's really pretty simple. And s then a week from Sunday are the first two assignments. But you, need, you want to read the syllabus. I'm never talking about them in class. It's all really clear on the syllabus. So you want to read it, see if you have questions. It's like a... I don't, it's like a 40-page document or something. I don't know. Um, okay, good? All right, two other quick announcements. Uh, last time we talked about Asia. We're not going to talk about Asia today. We're going to come back to talking about Asia and Asians because I have a lot more I want to say. Uh, but as it turns out, a buddy of mine who teaches down in Brandywine, Penn State Brandywine, who's a sociologist, last summer for the first time took a group of students to Korea. Ben Park is his name, Professor Ben Park, really cool guy, really nice guy, very cool program about life and about death. And you get to, he's Korean, Park, come on, Korean. So uh, anyway, it's a, it's a summer bar program. If you are interested, I have some flyers here. There are some scholarship monies available. So I have flyers down here if you are interested. And uh, yeah, it's cool. Secondly, I'll come back. I'll talk about this later. I just wanted to kick it out there today so you know. Lori, my wife and I are in May. We're doing uh, eight days in Haiti at the house, at the, um, yeah, at the, it, at a, a guest house of uh, colleagues of ours. And it's just an opportunity to expand our minds. There's no college credit. The, th the cost is $2,200. Includes airfare, includes a thousand dollars. That's the program fee, but the program fee is going toward a program in Afghanistan. So we don't get anything of it. We're just giving eight days of our time to have more intimate exchanges and interactions and stuff with uh, people. Could be anybody. It doesn't have to be students, but it could be anybody. And in Haiti, which is like, man, if you want to have a, a mind shifting, life shifting experience. You, you go to Haiti, right, with people who are, yeah, it's just Haiti is one of those things. So I'll talk more about it. Um, you can go to the website, social19.org backslash Haiti, if you want more information. It's going to be an awesome eight days. I will say that. Really looking forward to it. But 
dude. But today we're talking about shithole nations. And uh, because, well, because we have to. And the first thing I want to say is, and this, this re in particular goes out to all of the people, all of you who don't like President Trump. Um, it's not clear whether he said it. Some people say he did, and some people who were in the meeting said they never heard him say this. And unless it's on tape, and to the best of my knowledge, it's not on tape yet. Nobody's released it. Um, and he says he didn't say it, although, you know, he says lots of things that he clearly said. You know what I mean? I mean, he says things, and then they, show, they play the tape for him of him saying it, and then he just says, I never said that. That's not me. So, like, I don't, you know, it's easy to disregard him. But there isn't, to the best of my knowledge, there isn't proof that he referred to use the term shithole nations, okay? So I want to be really clear about that. So it's not in quotes. I put it in quotes, but it shouldn't really be in quotes because I don't know that he said it. But I, nonetheless, what I caught is that this really reverberated with a lot of people and not just the liberal left. It reverber reverberated with lots of people, both in the United States and around the world. And in fact, you know, some, some folks, really high up folks at the UN, really came down and condemned this and once again in some ways probably too quickly unless there's you know clear evidence that he actually said it so like you know we we live in this world where it's really easy to believe the things we want to believe and to dislike the people that we already dislike to find more ammunition to dislike them and it's uh it's really hard to actually see the good in the people that we don't like or to see the positive in the things that we think are negative, whatever it is. And so it's most of us, this is what we do, right? We read things that confirm what we already think. We hang out with people that by and large think like us and go through the world like us. And, you know, we, we, um, we watch programs that, that, you know, sort of reaffirm or reassert everything that is about our ideology. What we don't do very much is really challenge ourselves. So, you know, it's like you want to take courses with professors who you disagree with, right? You want to read books written by people who you really disagree with. You, you always want to do that. We want to challenge. Life is about challenge. If we're not challenging ourselves, certainly in the, in the, in ac in the academy, we're not being educated. And so uh, I, I want to I, I really stay away with that. And I'm not going to talk about Trump really and whether he said or didn't say it uh, but I want to um, go in a I, I just I really want to talk sort of the larger context of how and why this reverberates with people by um, challenging us to think about some things that are a bit outside the box so first thing all right bro uh, first thing I need three volunteers and the volunteers um, I who I need are going to be people who have a more of a conservative orientation on life. And that doesn't necessarily mean politically conservative, but uh, it does mean conservative, conservative certainly uh, economically, right? The sort of this ideology that, you know, that individual um, effort is really probably the most critical thing to moving ahead, that, you know, opportunities are there. You really have to go out and and make them, make it happen, um, find them. If you have obstacles in your way, then what you really need to do is overcome that. And that doesn't mean that you believe that sexism and racism and so on don't exist. So for those of you who are going to volunteer, I, being identified in the academy as conservative in your organization, so those of you who are conservatives, and you, you probably you know this already, being identified in the academy, meaning academic, a, a, academia in a place, a university like this, it means being identified as a racist, as homophobic, as sexist, as narrow-minded, as dumb, right? This is the general sort of more liberal orientation of, uh, of the kind of university settings and university culture, and that just is the case. It is the case that people don't really question some of that. That's not what I mean. But what I mean by contrast is, that, you know, that what I just said a little bit ago, right? That kind of sense that it's, you know, it's individual's responsibility to move forward. Um, you know, it's not the state 
you know, when I have low taxes, you want, this, you want the government to be involved in as little of your life as possibly can be, and so on and so forth, okay? That's conservative. That's what I'm talking about. So what I need now are three conservative volunteers who, dude, I got one, two, and somebody from the back. Conservatives always sit in the back. <laughs> so there are more of you back there. So I need three. You can jump. You can stand up, by the way. I need one more who's more conservative. Hey, by the way, by the way, what I know is that about 20, 20 to between 20 and 25 percent of you, I know this already because I've already, I've pulled classes for the past two semesters, so I know. And I didn't do it this semester, but I know that about 20 to 25 percent of you, A, either A, voted for Trump, or B, would have voted for Trump had you been able to vote at least 20% of you. That's a lot of people. And I'm assuming if you voted for Trump, you identify as conservative, but maybe not. Maybe you just want to see the, the world explode, <laughs> which it might well do. So I need one more. Can I just get one more person? One more person who identifies as conservative. You identify as conservative, bro? Your family does? Does that mean you do also? All right, dude. All right, come on. All right, you're up. Dude, we have this idea that we're all the, hang on a minute, we're all the white men. So how you doing? <laughs> right? Like, seriously. Like, what, what are you leaving it to the brown men to, to, be, to be the voice of conservatism in here? And one white woman, like, come on, like, what's up with that? So we have this idea that it's, A, number one, that it's white men See the, the white men, the white white men, like yeah, there's that kind of thing, especially now with you know we have the with so many so many people talking about gender and and the Me Too movement and the hashtag and so on. It's like all, all this energy, this negative energy, really directed toward white men. And so here, two, it's one white woman and two brown guys. So I just want to point that out, by the way. All right, man. What? So can we'll start? What, what's your name? My name's Brooke. Brooke. What, and what, what leads you, and what's like the key qualities of conservatism that you think really, that you identify with? I raised my hand because you said they believe in like individualism, and uh -huh. like that's what drives you. And like I definitely think that individualism is like very important mm -hmm. to people. So in, would you go as far as like the Ayn Rand kind of thing or maybe not that far? Do you know what she Wait, is? what? Ayn Rand, uh, never mind. Okay. So, uh, okay. So individualism is yeah. really jumps out. So if yeah. you hit an obstacle, you just like keep going. Yeah. Okay. Bro, and bro, what's your name? My name's Sagar. What is it? Sagar. Sagar. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, the things that I really support about conservatism is uh, support for small businesses, um, you know, not taxing way out of proportion for people who just simply m have more wealth. And then lastly, the government shouldn't play such a big role in people's lives. The government's only job should really be to protect us. The main job of the government is to protect us and don't play, don't play, so minimize the role of government as much as possible. Re be responsible for your own individual well-being as much as possible, et cetera, right? So you, you hear that, right? She didn't say, that individuals are responsible for everything, right? That's not what Brooke said. It's like that's the or that's where she leans. That's really important. All right, bro. Um, okay, so can you guys hear me? Dude, right. they can hear you, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yo, my name is Spage, and honestly, he kind of already said everything that I think of con conservatism. Yeah. So your families, your parents are both conservative. Uh, yeah. Where, you, where is your family from? Um, my mom is from China. My dad's from Hawaii. So. Uh huh. Both yeah. lean conservative. So you just are naturally inclined in that direction. Yeah. Most of us start out where our parents start out, by the way. Bro, what is, what's your background, by the way? Um, my parents are conservative. I'm Indian. I was born here, but I'm Indian. Yeah? Okay. Are your parents conservative? Yeah. My pap's really conservative. Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, all right, man. By the way, I'm just, you should know, I'm actually a registered libertarian. So, like, libertarians are like the real extreme right wingers. Uh, I do that because 
it keeps me balanced, right? As being a, as a sociologist, I, I'm inclined toward understanding the ways in which invisible forces shape human beings. So like, so I'm inclined towards social engineering because I know if you like pass a policy or something, the whole, the whole world can shift. And so it's like really easy for me to sit back in the, in, on my throne and be like, well, we should pass this policy and this policy and this law and this and this and this. And so I can get really caught up in that. So I, I do most of my reading and my sort of intellectual work in this way is toward libertarianism because since I'm, I know that I am inclined down here, I need to read all the stuff down here to, bout, to get back to the middle. And I want to be in the middle. The middle is always the kind of place where you want to go. Okay, so stand up here. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna show you some slides, okay? And I wanna. Oh boy. All right. So what's the ideal distribution of wealth in a country? And so when we're talking about wealth, we're talking about you know all of the the sort of um, the cash that you have, the the value of any property, and and so on and so forth, stocks, bond, whatever it is, right? Um, and uh, minus all your debt, and so that becomes your wealth, okay? So you add it all together, you subtract your debt. So, you know, if you, if you live in a house that costs $500,000, but you have a mortgage on that house of $400,000, your wealth is only $100,000, right? Because the bank owns 400000 of that, right? Which is what a lot of people do. They mortgage them, so, I mean, you don't need to share that. Okay, so what's the ideal distribution of wealth in the country in which you want to live, okay? First slide, Blair. Option A, you don't have to respond to any of these. And don't talk amongst yourselves, just option A. So let me explain what this means, right? So the, the, the population, just like this room here, we would divide it into like, let's say uh, five groups. And we take the richest 20% of the people in here and they're the, the, this group right here. Then we take the second richest 20% of the people in this room, and they are this group here. And then, so of all the wealth in a society, which is all of this right here, like what, what percentage should each group control? Okay, you got that? Does everyone understand what we're talking about? You got it, right? Okay, so that's the first one. Second one, option B. So go back to A. Um, so here, this is about as close to kind of even keel socialism as you're probably going to get and here it's like okay the rich are getting a little bit more again this is almost 30 percent of the wealth right this changes all right next one option c look at this we did it in so back one bro so this is b again watch how these go to c see how that happens and so the the richest 20 percent owns a, a fair amount the bottom 20 percent the poorest 20 percent of people in your society are getting poorer okay or D, here, right? So which is the one where, so think about which, so can we do it again, go back to A? A, everyone in class, you should do this, right? Like, so think about it, you want, which society do you want to live in, right? Where do you, like if you are, you're getting your college degree at Penn State and you're gonna leave Penn State and you're gonna move to a country with a distribution of wealth. So all the wealth in that society is going to get distrib distributed somehow, and you're going to move to that country. Which is the one that you want to live in? So A, B, C, or D. Thinking about where it is that you're going to be and where are you going to end up. And don't think about where your parents are. Think about where you're going to be. Like, what's the society? What do you want for the people around you? Right? Who do you want when you walk down the street, when you drive down the street, when you go into a city, you go into a rural area, how do you want to think about all the people around you in your community? Right? Who's got all the wealth? Like, who's got it? Like, where is it at? Okay? So, okay, you can turn around again now. So, who, who wants to go first? You, do, you have, do you all have your answers, by the way? Everyone has their answer? All right, Brooke, we'll start with you. I'm between B and C. I don't know which one, though. You're between B and C? Yeah. I can't choose between the two. Uh-huh. What, what is it about B? Or what is it about C? Like, what, what do you see? I just, like, don't know, like, how much the bottom 20% is, like, people-wise. Like, how many people that actually is. Well, yeah, okay, so 20% of the population, 
Right, so let's say it's this room, right? So it's going to be like, I don't know, like that group up there is about the bottom 20%. And the top 20% would be like this group here. So it would be like this room is it. One, two, three, four. And these two groups on the front and center, you, you'd combine those. They combine to equal one of these sections. So that's how many people we're talking about. So imagine this is just your country, only expanded by, I don't know, times a lot of people. So, B or C? Bro, how about you? Um, I think I'm going to go with C. C? What is it about C? So, in C... Um, well, 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 hang on. Go back to A. Why not A? Okay, so if the wealth was distributed like that and the top 20% had as much as they have and um, the bottom 20 had that much, what work would be going on in the country that the bottom 20% earned as much as the wealthy half of the nation? In my opinion, as far as skills and the amount of work you do, that really does influence how much wealth you accumulate. Okay. And so, um, I mean, just like real quick, I, I read something where this one Talk company. Talk right into the mic, dude. Oh, um, there's this one company that made the minimum wage in the company 70 grand. And the thing about that was, is that the top half of the people left that company because, I would say, like, who's the company to say that I'm as valuable as, um, let's see, if I'm a janitor, I'm as value, valuable as a CEO yeah, or take, something like that. Right. So take here. And yeah. Take here in the U.S., right? Yeah. So, like, I, I am as valuable as a person that comes in and cleans the floors at night. So, right? yeah, that's who's, the thing. Who's more needed? Who's yeah. I mean, did I, did I went to college for my degree. Did, did, the, did that person end up going to college? And if yeah, they and didn't, you, then okay. you know, they're, they're out less money than I am. Okay. All right, cool. Bro, how about you? I would say either B or C. I am leaning a bit more towards C because in the end, it, I, I kind of feel how much you put in is how much you should get out in terms of like wealth because like all of us are putting in an extra four to eight years of studying just to get a better job. Yeah. What's the point of doing that if you're barely earning more than someone who skipped all of that? So. Okay. All right. Okay, can we do, can everyone do something here real fast? Can you just talk to the person next to you and explain your choice and why you chose what you chose? <laughs> and if you're, make sure you talk to somebody. Here, talk to that guy right there. Okay, so, um, we, we, I got zero too. Yeah. They started with zero and now we, we make decent Jeez. amounts of money, right? I know, right? And that's not, we earned all of it. That's, see, that's, the, that's the we went from we, we went from being FOB to upper middle class. Yeah. So it, it, in the end, it's, it's all the work you put in. All right. Okay, so. All right. Let's let's do this. You ready? Um, so first, let me just say something really fast. Do not, under any circumstances, do not sit on the attendance sheet. Like sign it and move it along. Okay. Nobody sit on it. You got. You know what I mean? Don't hold on to it. All right. Uh, go to the next slide, bro. Um, okay, which one's the actual wealth distribution in the U.S.? I would say D. It's D. C. You'd say C. You'd say, and the two of you would say D. Yeah. If you think it's D, what, so does that mean you don't want to live here? No, uh, I mean, I, I like living here. It's just, ideally, C would be a little bit nicer, I think. Okay, well, here, can you go to the next slide? It is, it is D, by the way. D is the actual distribution of wealth in the United States, okay? So then the question, it would be a little nicer, you say. You yeah. said C, so you didn't know D was it. Yeah. Uh-huh. What, what do you think now, knowing that D is what? I don't know. I mean, like, again. No, I've, talking to the mic. I've, I was between the two again. Talking to the I mic. I just wasn't sure. Yeah. I, I don't know what they are, though. Like, like what are you? How surprised are you that D is the answer? Yeah, I didn't think that the bottom twenty percent didn't have like any. Uh huh. And no, and look at the top twenty percent. It's over eighty percent. I mean, it's close to eighty-five percent of all the wealth, right? So th that's not inherently a problem. The United States is operating quite well. Most of you are happy here if you're here. I mean, most of it does you know, right. It's not. 
It's not inherently a problem. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you have a response to that? No, not at <laughs> all. Yeah? Okay. But it is, it's something to think about, right? I'm not saying it's good or bad. That's not my job. This is a sociology class. So you can study this in e economics. I, can make, I could make, the part of me that is an economist could make a really good argument for why this works well. And I could make a, probably a good argument for why C would work well. Or B, or maybe even A. It gets harder, though, as you start going down, as things get more equal, right? Okay, but let me ask you this. Um, next slide, bro. Which one is the ideal distribution of income in the country in which you want to live? Okay, you got two options here. So everybody watch this. You're going to break up into groups again. So, and bro, make sure you don't hit it three times. Uh, so take a look at this. Um, percent of income earned by each group. So the bottom 20% is this. So it's, look, look, it's a nice little scale. So this is A or B, this. So look at these numbers change down here. So this is over, this is 50% here, top 20% and so on, right? And go back again. Here, which one would you want to be? The first one or the second one? Where would you want to be? Second one. Second one? Not sure. How about you? The second one. Why, why the second one? So the top 20% makes significantly more than um, the next, middle, next, and then bottom again. Yeah. But it also gives you something to really work for, right? Um, once again, if everyone was paid the same, uh -huh. the issue would be that no one would have the motivation to go out and do more. But th Whereas they're, not, they're not paid the same at all, to be clear. Right? Yeah, that's, that's why this works for me, is that um, everyone has a reason to try and jump up to the next level. So you, got, you, got, you realize you got a lot of poor people here on this one. Go <laughs> back one, bro. You got a lot less poor people. Like, when you have poor people, you got to deal with poor people, right? Like, when you have homeless people... You, you, when you're walking down the street, you got to, at the very least, if people are sleeping on the sidewalk, you got to step over them. It's like that can get annoying after a while. People panhandling or whatever. I mean, and I'm not making a joke there. It's like you got people, looks like the woman in Baltimore who they just kicked out of the hospital in her, in her gown and just, they just took her out to the bus stop in the middle of a cold, cold night and just said, here you go. Like you got to deal with that. You're driving by like, holy sh like. Do you, do you want to see that, right? That, so it's just a question. So here, you'll see less of that. In the next one, you're going to see more of that. But you'll see it either way, correct? Yeah, you're going to see it some way. Do you have? Can you all do a favor really quick? Which one do you? Which one? Which income distribution do you want to be part of? In your in the world in which you're moving to. So, you know, so you guys, so you understand this. On this, what this means is, go back to that one. Of all the income that's being distributed, that's being earned in your society, the, pot, the poorest 20% get almost 10% of it. Whereas in the other one, they get, you know, less than 5 about less than 5%, okay? So, are we good? All right, man. Uh, go... So let me show you something, right? Um, next slide. So this one's Sweden. Sweden's a Scandinavian country, state socialist society, about as close as you're going to get to a socialist society, right? And this one, the next one, is the United States, right? So you, you both said, you said you'd rather live in the U.S., or you said that because, in, you said you'd rather live in this one because it gives you more to work toward, right? Okay, so let me show you something. Um, I think it's nonetheless. What I, here's what I want to say, um, and then you, I'll, and then you can sit down. Th and thanks for doing this, by the way. It's interesting that all of you who lean toward a more conservative perspective, right? Which is, you know, like you got to be responsible for yourself, 
I mean, more than before you turn to the state, look to yourself, right? That's the essential idea. It's not about, conservative perspective is not about throwing people out on the street in hospital gowns. You know what I mean? That's not what that is. But it's about, look, first and foremost, look in the mirror and say, what can I do to fix my situation? Secondly, that's not all conservatives, but that's a, a valid conservative perspective. And, and yet, this country you want to live in in terms of wealth, that you, you know, none of you said this country. And I think that it, it really says something about what we know and what we don't know, about the places in which we're living and the ideas we have. And I, I'm really thinking about the implications of that that the wealthiest people control so much of the wealth. It shapes what we are as a nation and what we can be, and it shapes what you all can be, right? Because you're at Penn State, y'all, right? Most of y'all, you're not going to be the CEOs. Like, you're not. You're not going to, most of you are not, you're not going to be the millionaires, right? You're not. Some of you will be, but look, some of you are really rich, and some of you come from really rich families, and that's fine. But you might be getting a college education and maybe you're in SMEAL or maybe whatever, maybe you're in sociology or, but maybe you're in SMEAL and you're in finance. But you know what? There are kids in finance at Harvard and Princeton and MIT and so on who are from really, really wealthy families who are in finance. And like, they're, they're already getting the internship between high school and college. They've got the internship on Wall Street. You know what I mean? And it's like, so we come here to a place like this and we think like, oh, this is going to even things out. Dude, those dudes, they're way ahead already. So it's like, ah, yeah, you know, I want to be in the U.S., right? Because there's more competition here. But the problem is you're already the underdog. Probably. I don't know what your family does. I don't know, right? But you got it. You're already the underdog. So it's like, why do I want to compete when people have such a big head start? You, you got that, right? It's just a question. I'm just throwing that out there to discombobulate it, right? Do you have any final things you want to say before you sit down? Uh, no, no, unless you want to like ask a question. Uh, nah, about. we'll come back to that. But, no, thank you. Dude, thank you, Doug. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. Yeah, you can turn them off. All right, here. Thank you. So here. By the way, you, you, you all catch what I just said, right? Like, we're, we can come back to this, but this is also something in the world of race. I mean, we're going to link this whole conversation to race relations. And, uh, but here, let's go to this. I want to show you something here. So, next slide. So, Trump says, why don't we have more people? What we need are less people. F Apparently, he said this. Once again, I haven't heard the recording, but people seem to be agreeing that this he actually said, even though I didn't put quotation marks around it because I, I don't I didn't hear the recording, right? But the, I, what they say he said was, why, we need more people from countries like Norway or Scandinavian countries, right? So Sweden is basically the same as Norway. And my thing is like, well, hang on a minute. Uh, let's, think, let's think what Norway and Sweden and Denmark, let's, and, you know, the, Netherlands, let's think about what some of these countries are, right? And why they would want to come here. And, you know, where, you know, you pay really high taxes and the government is really strong and there are lots of programs for you and there are, there are ways in which the government is there, it's going to take care of you, certainly if you struggle, but even if you don't struggle, if you contribute to the system, you're... You have a job, you pay your taxes, you have a job for a certain amount of time, not that you're a slacker, like you have a job, then eventually you move along and you earn the right to certain privileges. So for a woman, it might be after you give birth to your child, it could be a year off. And if you're married, if you're a man married to a woman and your wife has a child or even your domestic partner has a child you are entitled to time off and in like sweden i think it's like six months or something right and education is free unemployment you're going to be taken care of in terms of unemployment right so all all sorts of things hospital taken care of right i mean you can buy insurance to have better hospitalization but you don't really need it Roads are fine, daycare privileges, earn credits for daycare, one thing after another. Money, when your child is born, you're automatically given a, 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 a check 
to take care of many of the costs of taking your child and one thing after another, right? It's like, wow, all these things, right? Now, mind you, you got to live in, let's say, Norway, where it rains all the time and like, oh, sweet, right? But if you are a contributing member to society, man, you're taken care of. So it's not like here where every day I'm running and running and running and running to try to keep going up those stairs because at any moment they turn to ice and then I start slipping backwards. It's like, no, man, all I got to do is walk, move along, do what I do, get up every day, and then I'm all taken care of. It's all good. Right? It's like, okay. Why would they come here? Right? Like, why are they going to come here? At the, the outside, ch- if you're rich, but at the chance of what? Be, making millions of dollars? It's like, wh- why, would I, why would you do that? Right? Like, we live in a, soci- a culture where it's just sort of ingrained to say, no, we should make as much money as possible. But there are many cultures in the world, y'all, where that's not the goal. The goal is to be happy. Scandinavian countries are the happiest people on earth. Why do we want to be here and be miserable? We, we're not unhappy, by the way, so, but, we're, but we're way down below. Why would I want to, but why don't I want to be somewhere and be miserable? Why don't I want to be somewhere and be happy? Well, maybe I'm not it's highly unlikely I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to have to pay a lot in taxes, but I'm going to get a lot back from that. I have a lot of protections. It's all good. Life is good. All right. Great. So it's like maybe in some ways we're just like, we're, we're, is it possible that we've been just, like in this culture, there's a certain brainwashing that happens. Like it's, in, you know, like I say brainwashing, but it's really just a socialization to accept things as they are inevitable. Like certain things are inevitable, but in fact they don't need to be inevitable. You could be really happy. You could be, people who can be more equal. People, I'm not stepping over people who are homeless on the street. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to deal with that. It's like, okay. Right, not just there, there are problems, right? So it's not like there are these amazing societies. And again, you pay a lot in taxes, but for those taxes, you get it's like insurance. So here, let me let's look at this. So here's wealth distribution. Let me show you something. This is pretty cool. This is wealth distribution in the US. Okay, we're gonna go back to this. Cool? Go to the next one. This is Sweden. Look at wealth distribution in Sweden. Go back to the U.S., go back to Sweden. Sweden's a socialist society, right? What? Come on, man, look at that. The Swedes, like the rich in Sweden, they control everything just like the rich here. Okay? But there's a difference. What's the difference? Right? What's the difference? Just pair up really fast. So what's the difference between them and us? Anyone, anyone have anything? Do you have something? Anyone have an answer? What's the difference, bro? The rich in Sweden. What's that? The higher taxes in Sweden. The rich are paying a lot, lot more than the rich here. So a lot of those social funding programs, the social programs, come from funding from the rich. All right. Yep. That's one thing. Yep. Bro. What else? Uh, you have a different diversity of people here than you do in Sweden. Sweden, you kind of have many similar people, whereas okay. here we have melting pot. Okay, all right, so there's, there's a diversity of people here. What else? What, what else, though, like, if you're on the bottom, what, if you're on the bottom 20% in Sweden, what's it mean for you? What's it mean? Anybody, just think about 
Think about it. Think about how I just defined Norway, but it's the same thing as Sweden, right? What do you, what do you say? One is, here, let me help you. All right? First off, you don't got to worry about, what, what do you, you don't need money. You, uh, you just got to contribute, you just got to work. Just contribute to the system. What am I, what, I can live paycheck to paycheck. It's all good. It's taken care of. I lose my job. I, I've already paid into the system. It's good. I'm taken care of. I don't, need, I don't need lots and lots and lots of money. I don't need to generate a lot of wealth. I can still lead a really, really nice life. And I can be in the bottom 40%. And it's okay. I can have my house, give my food, have my car, have my insurance, have my retirement. I'm taking care of that. I have my job. I'm a janitor at a university. I'm a food service worker at a McDonald's. I'm whatever I am. I'm going to have the same things, albeit not as much, but I'm going to have my health care. I'm going to have my, um, my children's education taken care of. I'm gonna, if I have a baby, the government's going to step in and give me money for the baby. I'm gonna, it's all taken care of. Right? It's all good. So the difference here, so go back to the U.S. It's, if we go back one, the, what's the bottom 20% in the U.S.? You're screwed. You, I mean, you're like, if one little thing goes wrong, you're on the street. Like, how y'all pay? Those of you who are poor, how much, some of you are mortgaging, you know, you're paying, you're going to pay $100,000 or more for your education at Penn State. That $100,000 is going to set you back so far. In Sweden, you would pay nothing. You're all, it's good. You could be poor in Sweden. You still go to college. You're all right. You pay just as much as the wealthiest Swede. So there's a big difference there. And so when Donald Trump is saying, wow, why don't we get these Swedes? First off, rich Swedes, the only people who are going to come are probably the wealthy ones. Because poor ones, Swedes, Norwegians, they're not going to come here. You see what I mean, right? So it's like, dude, what are, you, what are you talking about? Like, think about the implications. So here, next slide. So here's what I want you to do, and I want you to just take a couple minutes, and then we're going to move in a different direction. How would you live different? Just answer that question. All you need to be is average, y'all, just like me. 51, 51st percentile on the SATs, baby, right here. Just average, tiny bit above average, it's all good. I don't got to worry about getting rich. I don't got to worry about falling back. I don't got to worry about being homeless, being, t you know, nah, it's all good. I can, I got to work, you know what I mean? I can't be a slacker. I can't become a drug addict. I can't, you know, that sort of thing. Like, I can't do that. I still got to work, but I don't got to spin my wheels like a crazy person. Trying to be like, oh, my God, if I don't make a million dollars, how am I going to send my kid to school? And how am I going to buy a house? And how can I afford an apartment in New York City? And like, oh, my God, I'll be homeless. And nah, dude, chill out, dog. Sit back. All good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Life is good. Right? Can you just turn to the person next to you? How would you be different? How would you live differently? Yo, before you do that, where are the attendance sheets? Yeah, and someone hold up the attendance sheets. If you Who have the attendance them? sheet, one, thank you, thank you. One. Middle section. Thank you. One. Lauren. Okay, let's uh let's keep going. Um that's I don't I look, I don't have an answer, right? I, w I probably wouldn't, I would probably still be me. I'm like uh, a lunatic, right? I'll, I, w I work too hard. I only work too hard. I've, my whole life, I've just, 
spinning all the time. I'm doing way too many things. It's just I'm just inclined in that way. That's just fine. Not for money, just to do it. But so I probably wouldn't, I, pro- I may not change much, but I don't know, but maybe if I grew up in, this, in a society where the emphasis was more on being happy than being afraid, a lot of things could change. You know what I mean? A lot of things could change. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, uh, Team Africa, who I picked out before class. Can you come down? <laughs> Team Africa. <laughs> Um, so, wait, I didn't pick out any men. Are there, wait, are there any African men? Where are the African men? I need at least one guy down here. Where, where's <laughs> African men? I need one African man. Dude, no, hang on, Mama Dude, we had you already. Dude, can we, no, let me not use you. I need an African guy. Can we, bro, come on down. All right. So say, say your name and where you're from. Oh. I'm Whitney. I'm from Houston. And my parents are from Lagos, Nigeria. From Lagos, Nigeria. All right. Go ahead. I'm uh, Oyindamola. I am from Nigeria. What, what's your name again? Oyindamola. Wait, Whitney, is that the, par- the name that your parents is on your birth certificate? I'm going to give that name. Yeah, please give okay. that name. As in... Uh, that's my African name. Your African name. Yes. Go ahead. What is it? As in the. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. As in the. As in the. How do I do? Butchered, but sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bro. Uh, my English name is Bryant, but my real name is Tamuno Nengi Ofuri. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sentence. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Wait, it's a, whole, it's a whole sentence? It's a whole sentence. Yeah, what's it mean? There's nothing greater than God, essentially. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I had a friend. Okay, yeah. Praise be to God. Yeah. yeah. Atheist. If you're an atheist, what do, you, what, do, what do atheists call you, right? Bryant. All right. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right, man. Uh, yes. My what? name's Rimas, and I'm from Sudan. From Sudan. Where did you, where's your family from? Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos, in Lagos, you said Lagos, right? In Lagos, Ni- Nigeria. Lagos. And, yes. Um, I was born in Lagos, and then I moved to America when I was three. Uh-huh. So, um, my real name is Akwayemi, but my, ni- my American name is Opie. Opie? Yes. Wait, what's your, what's your real name? Akwayemi. Say it again. Akwayemi. Akwe? Akbe, like Akbe. Akbe. <laughs> ah, Akbe. Akbe? Akbe, I mean, yeah. Akbe. And then, see, I can't do that sound, right? Akbe. Okay. All right. Um, I'm Michelle, and I'm Cameroonian. Cameroonian? Wait, you're from Sudan. Cameroonian. And the rest of you are from Nigeria. Okay, so, so you are all from shithole countries, right? <laughs> Pres- am I right? I mean, are you all talking about that? Or have, were you talking about that with your friends all weekend, pretty much? Yeah, like, disregard this. Yeah. And so, um, you would be considered, when Americans, and one of the things, one of the reasons this resonates, and whether Trump said it or not, I've, if I had a dollar for every time I heard somebody refer to, use the term, shithole nations, I'd be rich. And what they're talking about are, you know, not only, you know, your countries, right? Your, your homeland, so to speak, but also other countries, right? So we're not going to do Team Caribbean. So I want to I want to show you I want to show the class something. So you can turn around and watch this. Look at this. Go to the next slide. So Sub-Saharan African. So these are all the countries south of the Sahara. Okay. So it's not all the the the, the, the Muslim countries of the north, pretty much. Um, Twenty four years and older uh, in the U. S. Um, 41% of the adults, 25, 25 and older, have college education. 25, 41%. So 
Just hold on to that. Keep that in mind, right? 41%. It says sub-Sahara Africa. When we talk about the poorest areas of the world, you all, we talk generally sub-Saharan Africa region is, a, is identified as really the poorest area of the world by basic demographic indicators. The amount of poverty, um, the access to water, access to um, irrigation, food, and so on and so forth, right? But of all the immigrants from sub-Saharan Africans, there's about 1.4 million here, which would include all of your families, right? And you all, your, your parents. 25 years and older, 41% have college educations, okay? That's not really, that's, th these are the people that we want to bring. So shithole nations, this is not, this is, these would be the people that we want. We want to be a, hey, open up the gates to more Africans, right? So um, next, next slide. So 25 years and older, uh, living, immigrants living in the U.S., um, who have college degrees. So all Africans is 49%. So now we're going up to Egyptians, Ethiopians, you know, uh, um, wait, Sudanese. So you're not part of Sub-Saharan Africa. So you're part of all Africans, right? So you're above the Sahara. So all black immigrants, so now we include Haitians, you know, the, what's the number one immigrants? Of all the immigrants who are black coming into the United States, what's the number one sending country? Do you know? Do you all know? Well, now it's actually Nigeria. It is. How about the immigrants who are already here? Do you know what it is? Haiti. No. Haiti's number two. Do you know what it is? Anybody? Do you know? Anybody know? No, it's Jamaica. Whoa. By far and away, Jamaica. Dude. <laughs> Team Jamaica. All right. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> so all immigrants, 30% of all immigrants in the United States have college, who are 25 years and older living in the U.S. have college educations. So look at Africans, black immigrants, all immigrants, and all U.S. born, the population of the United States, all U.S. born, 31% has a college education. So Africans are right where Africans are above Americans. So, by the way, immigrants from India are 51%, or immigrants from East Asia, East Asia and South Asia are 51%, and immigrants from the Middle East are at 48%. Okay? So, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want from you all. Y'all, listen, first off, let me be clear to many of you in the class. And in particular, I'm just going to do this with, because black people, you already know this. Um, black Americans, right? You already know this. But I in particular want to speak to white people. There are African students probably in this class whose families could buy and sell your family 20 times over. Okay? <laughs> so when you walk around Penn State, and I'm not saying it's any of theirs. Or you might have people trying to get your digits, right? But... When you walk around Penn State and when you're in 119 and you look at people and we start using all these data, the black people and Asian people and white people and so on, you need to shift a little bit. Just like Donald Trump needs to shift a little bit and Americans need to shift. Dude, African immigrants come, there are millions of African immigrants in the United States, half of them over the age of 25, have college degrees. And those younger than the age of 25, half of them will have college degrees. You got it? So when you're looking at African immigrants, what you want to do is think educated, smart, money. You want to think. Now, it doesn't mean we don't also have African immigrants who are really poor, but disproportionately compared to white people? Come on, man. Like, they're not shopping at Walmart. You know what I mean? They're not shopping at Walmart because they're not buying their shit at Walmart. I had a woman from Nigeria in class about 10 years ago. On the weekends, she would get on an airplane and fly to London to go shopping and come back. She'd leave on a Friday afternoon and come back on a Sunday night. She went shopping in London. And I'm like, and then she comes back here and people are looking at her like, oh yeah, you're really poor. It's like, she's not poor dog. Like, you need to change the way you see things, okay? So, what I want you to do, 
is talk a little, about, a little bit about education in your communities with your parents. What do your parents do? How important is education? How much do they talk about education? Is it possible that you could go through life not being educated, not going to college? Was it a choice or was it like, nah, man? You're... So who wants to go first? Like, uh, Pretty much when I was born, because my dad's an engineer, he has a master's degree, he got it from University of Alabama. So pretty much when I was born, I'm the only boy. I was told I'm an engineer. Uh, <laughs> ended up working out for me, but like... So they, got, they actually got you confused with an Indian kid. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> or, or someone from the Middle East, right? Pretty okay, much. go ahead. No, it's the same with Africans. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think ever since I was young, they always gave me the incentive. It was like, each A is like, I don't know, $10 or whatever. And I was like, okay, I can make money this way from when I was young. They never gave me the money, but... <laughs> like, well, you're, hang on, your parents bribe you? With try, they tried to. Are they Christians? Yeah. Dude, you know that's a sin punishable by death <laughs> in hell. You know, your parents are going to hell. I'll tell them to repent. Dude, um, <laughs> tell them to repent. Seriously, it says in Corinthians, really clear, homosexuality, if you're homosexual, Jeff, you're going to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> and... If you resort to bribery, your parents, you're going to hell. So your parents are going to be hanging out with Jeff in hell. All right. <laughs> Got it. Okay, good. Just want to say that. Okay, so you're going to be an engineer. All right. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm from a family of seven, so there's seven kids. And pretty much, yeah, everyone had to get an education. If not, you'll be sort of disowned. And so when you say had to get an education. You, you have to. Like, I'm doing chemical engineering right now. So. so could you go to a, what if you wanted to just, like, I don't know, go sow your oats a little bit and go hang out in Nigeria? No? None of that? What if, what if you wanted to go to a community college? Nope. Yeah? And, uh-huh, okay. How about you? Um, my dad is uh, an engineer. My mom's a nurse. And pretty much from when I was born, I knew I had to go to college and become a doctor. So you ha you're going to go to college and be a doctor? Oh, I am in college. I'm oh, no, okay, hang on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be a doctor? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yo, you got Tim's on, too. And they're polished. <laughs> all right. So I guess I'm black, too. Do you? You're also <laughs> black. Don't, listen, but don't be confused with African-American, right? Uh-huh. That's going to be another conversation we're going to have. We're not going to have enough time today, probably. Okay, go ahead. Um, when my parents lived in Sudan, my dad was a, um, a surgeon. Then when we came here, like, gave that up. So ever since I was little, he was like, we gave up everything for your education. And I'm pretty much the disappointment in the family because I don't want to do medicine. So he, like, lets me know that every car ride home. So what, what's your major? I'm international politics. Oh, right, okay. So you're going you, so to be something like an ambassador somewhere, and that'll be a disappointment. Yeah. Okay. He's like... Yeah. So what do your parents do? Uh, my dad does, like, medical research, and then my mom's a medical lab technician. Okay. All right. It so, like, education was, like, super important in my house. Like, like I'm the disappointment because I didn't go to an Ivy League. So, <laughs> and, like, the family, Nigerian families around me, like, they all their kids were going to Ivy Leagues, and except for me. So, <laughs> so you are the slacker. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're just at Penn State. Yeah. And what are you studying? Um, I'm studying marketing. Marketing? Mm -hmm. And what do your parents do? Well, my dad's a CPA and my mom's a teacher. Wait, he's only a CPA and he <laughs> thinks you should be he in an Ivy League? You know well, I mean? the thing is, like, he, like, came here, so he didn't really have, like, the same opportunities, so he had to, like, yeah, okay. start from the ground up. Got so, it. Like, to, and that's, like, the same with my mom. They both have, like, masters and they both have, like, a lot of um, the other degrees, but they weren't given the same opportunities. No, so I, I got yeah. you. I hear that. You know, what's interesting, my wife jokes with me about this. I can trace my family back to 17th century, late 17th century Virginia, and I'm still, I still grew up working class. I had like seven generations to become something, and they were still poor. That shows you my DNA, right? My genetic lineage is really bad. Your parents came here and just like that, and here they are. Okay, yes. Well, my mom's a diplomat and my dad's a lawyer, and they were the Wait, first. Wait, a diplomat? Diplomat. What? Uh, what? An what? ambassador. Where at? Oh, for Cameroon, for the for UN Cameroon? in New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they were the both. They were both like the first educated um, and college-going individuals in our family. Um, so education is super, super important in my family. Um, and I'm an international relations major. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So you want to follow it with your mom? It's your mom who's a diplomat, right? Yeah. Yeah. So wait, does she have diplomatic immunity? Is she one of those people that parks her car wherever she wants to park it in the middle of New York? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> New Yorkers, it's her mom that's causing the problems, all right? Um, so listen, what? So when people call you, so do you, do, how do you, do you want to identify as African? How do you identify? Like, yeah, I'm African. You identify as African? I'm like, like Americanized Nigerian. So you grew up, yeah, up Americanized? Yeah, I grew up here. What's that mean, Americanized Nigerian? Um, like, when I go to school, like, I'm, like, Americanized. Like, I'm, like, in the culture, like, the clothing, the music, that's what Well, yeah, think. look, you're the only one wearing a Penn State shirt. No, he has a blue <laughs> and white shirt on. But, okay. But when I go home, I'm, like, in Nigeria. So <laughs> it's, like, little Nigeria at yeah. your house? Like, mm -hmm. it's little Cameroon at your house? What's little Nigeria at your house? Um, just, like, just the rules. Like, my parents are pretty strict. They're all about grades, the food, like, and that sort of thing. The like music. fufu and stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. How about you? S Sudanese. S are you from North Sudan, South Sudan? North. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I consider myself African. Like, I did grow up here, but, like, I'm African, so. So when people identif identify you as African-American, what do you say to that? I'm African. Yeah? So yeah. it's not African-American. I rep the necklace all the time. I'm African. Yeah. So you get, okay, Keep, how about you, what is your? Uh, pretty much the same thing. So people s call you black American, African American, and you say? I'm African. So you're really, yeah. so people see you all though, right? People do, let's be clear about this. Americans by and large, when most Americans think of black, white people in particular, when we think of black people, they think poor. They think, what are the stereotypes? Poor, come on, y'all, right? Ghetto, <laughs> ghetto. Here, look, listen, hey God, what's your name again? Michelle. Michelle, Michelle Ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> look at, it. see that hat right there? <laughs> Total ghetto. Can you imagine, like, thinking of, dude, her mom is an ambassador. <laughs> ghetto, right? No, you get this. Is that your mom up there, by the way? <laughs> it is? Seriously, is that your mom? <laughs> So look, do you, you understand the implication? See how we're, I'm like trying to turn this stuff on its head. It's like you, so she walks in a room and someone's like, oh, okay, well, sure. She's probably, you, she, Michelle got here at Penn State. She must have got here because of affirmative action, because she's black, because of this, because of that. You, you see, you see how this like, oh, man, okay. And how, so, what, so yeah, how do you identify me? Oh, yeah. African. 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 So yes. when people say African American, same thing. Can you can you just talk about that? Can some can some one of you talk about the tension a little bit in the black community by with like between Africans and African Americans? Anyone want to go ahead? Well, like in middle school, um, you know, my back my black friends would be like would tease me and be like, "Oh, you're an African booty scratcher and stuff." You yeah, they would tease because you and say what? That you're an African booty scratcher. Yeah. Because I'm African and, you know, they're American. Yeah. Oh, that's not even worse. I've been told that, do you ride elephants to school? <laughs> like stupid things like that. Like, do you do ride you, elephants? Do the lions no, walk? No, <laughs> no, we don't ride elephants to school. Just Mercedes Benzes, right? <laughs> Just BMWs. Chauffeur driven BMWs. That's it. Bro, can I mean, you talk? So talk about the tension a little bit, right? I personally like saying that I'm specifically Nigerian. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of people just hear Africa and they just generalize. It's like I've heard people ask me, "Do I speak African?" And I'm like, "In Nigeria, there's 150 languages. Like yeah. you gotta narrow it down like that." And so I don't nest. I don't like always ticking the boxes where it's always saying um, Black American because I feel like there's a lot of culture lost by saying I'm just what people think I am here. Yeah, just ever. Can, can, exactly, bro. I give me. I I want a Black American who traces their ancestry to slavery who's poor. Whoever thinks you're a guy, there's probably no many in class who's poorer than I am. Someone who's black from the U.S. Somebody, who, anybody, come, just come down real fast. Anybody. <laughs> Dude. Dude, who's, is that you, bro? Jesse Lucchetti, he's from Ottawa, Canada. Yeah, no, no. Dude, he's from Canada, he's Canadian, dog, they're rich. Canadians are rich. No, who's poor? No, are you poor, really? Yeah, but you're from Canada. He's from Canada, dog. Give me one person. Who's poor? <laughs> I need someone who's black and poor. 
Anybody? Do I there no poor black people here? Doug. All right. Come here, real fast. Come here. So what's your, what's your name? All right. My name is Maurice. Dude, you even have black Tims on, right? Yeah. Maurice, where yeah. are you from? I'm from Philly. From Philly? Yeah. What makes you poor? Uh, well, I come from like one of the worst neighborhoods in Philadelphia. So like, where nor where? It's like it's near North Philly. It's like Frankfurt. Is it oh. is it is it bad? Yeah. <laughs> it's bad, bro. It's bad. Is it bad because of you? No, or? not me. I, I stayed right. stay in the house. Okay, so what's your name again? Maurice. Maurice. Yeah. So, dude, wim women. Maurice, he's a nice looking guy, right? If you brought Maurice home to your family, <laughs> dude, wait, can you do that look again? Hang on, wait, hang on, dude, get her right there. I just want you to, I just want you to do the, do the look again. Do the, you brought him home to your family. <laughs> dude, what do you, what have you learned about, would you even try to date one of them? Like, do you, what do you know? What do you mean, like, what do I know? Yeah, what do you know about Africans? Uh... They're African. Or what do you think about? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about what I'm talking about right now? Oh, this is like. Oh, you mean like like African Americans and African like the yep. differences? Oh, this is like a big difference. Like it's huge. Yeah. It's like like culture wise, like how they're grazed. It's just completely different. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you see them, do you know like okay, this is a different world? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, here's the thing, y'all. Right? Come, bro, come down here real fast. Got it. So listen, take, see these two guys here? So once again, it's like it's a world of difference, man. It's a world of difference, y'all, right? It's like the two different worlds, man. He's from an amazingly poor kid. His parents are engineers. He's going to be an engineer. He's from a really poor community. What are you majoring in, bro? Communications. Communications, Communications. all right? So he's going to go home and try to communicate and get people in the neighborhood to communicate with one another. He's going to be an engineer, y'all, right? They're not the same. And what happens in a place like 119 is what I'm trying to show you is don't put people together in the same group. Like these five women here are just very different than some the average, I don't know, like five African American women you're gonna pull. It doesn't mean there aren't wealthy African American women, right? Like you could grow, like, bro, there are people in your neighborhood who have money, right? It's illegal money, but Robin, it's, money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not I working. Was gonna, I was gonna say, like from <laughs> From, ro from robbing people, but whatever. From robbing them, right? You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Like, you're going to rob her money. Okay. But, dude, you get it, right? So it's like a different world. We're going to come back. I want to keep going with the conversation of, of at, can you just say one more thing? Can someone just say one more no. thing about? No. They All can't. Right. You're off. All right, dude. <laughs> Cutting you off. All right, dude. Listen, thanks. I, thanks. I appreciate it. Yep. yep. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. We'll come back to you. Um, listen. So, no, no, no. Yo, yo, yo. No, no, no. We're not done. We're not done with class, dog. We have five minutes. Class goes to 420. Do we never, ever, ever dismiss early ever, ever in no. this class? So, Even sit though tight. it gets out at 420, which only means one thing. But <laughs> we, and I know you're all rushing because hey. you're like, it's 420. I got to get out of here, right? <laughs> But no, 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 hang on. I got a couple things I, well, I'm going to say, and then I'm going to introduce you to somebody. First off, listen, here's what I want to say. Um, one of the things that um, we are doing, that I'm trying to do in this class all the time, is to turn the world on its head, to try to demonstrate and show things that we don't already understand and that we don't think about and it's just not part of where we are. It's not part of the conversation. And so that's what we're doing in here as much as possible. So we tapped into it today. We'll come back to it. Um, we just touched the surface, but it's like, look, if, bro, can you blacken that one second real fast? If the people who are just listening to a Donald Trump or to whoever it is and talking about shithole nations and shithole and people and being afraid, it's like, Come on, man. That's not, it's just like seeing all, like, white men, white men, and thinking all white men are racist and sexist and homophobic. It's like, it's just that silly. Okay, however, this is Ellen. 
And Ellen is here with an announcement. I am. I think really hard about what I want to say when I walk into this incredibly intimidating classroom. One of the I appreciate most about where I work uh, is the following for you can judge them. Once you have done one, you eliminate the other. So if you have not yet judged me, I have an opportunity for you. And it is very much related to what you talk about in this class, and that is to connect people to people as individual human beings and not just a collective group of people. And also to collect pe or connect people to the natural world that surrounds us and that supports us. So I work for a program called Outdoor School, and we bring elementary school children to camp, and they stay with us for a week. And the opportunity for you is to come be a leader at this camp. You will be a teacher. You will be a counselor. You live with the kids. Uh, you will help them to make the most of this field trip, which is really not just a field trip. It's a life-changing experience for the children as well as for sometimes the counselors. So it takes place at the end of the spring. I have flyers down here if you would like to have one. If you apply to be a counselor and you're selected, it would be just for one week, not all five weeks. That would be academically disastrous for you. Um, so you would select one week. And we do have some training coming up in February. We will feed you for the week. We'll house you for the week. We'll give you teaching experience and leadership experience. You also can earn two credits through the class part of outdoor school and 75 community volunteer service hours if you are in a major or a group that needs those. Or if you have an underage. <laughs> Just saying. Sure. All right. Wh whatever. Go ahead. It's really hard to follow you. Dude, you I know. know. I know why, why don't you yeah. let me come at the more beginning of, them, of class? Can more I come, of them have underages than need At, at the beginning of hours. class? Yeah. Is there yeah. anyone here out of however many 700 and some people are here who have, has been a counselor at outdoor school or attended outdoor school as a child? Did. What's your name? Did you attend as a child? When were you a counselor? At Shavers Creek. Who else has been a camp counselor? Anywhere. Not just outdoor school. So all of you with your hands up should apply. And all of you who are sitting next to one of those people should ask them, what's so great about working at a camp? Yeah. And then you should apply as well. And, yo, any, they, you especially need men, especially need students of color, and come talk to Ellen right now if you want some information. It's a 